Hey guys, today I want to talk about these free camera shake presets. So Action VFX has a set of presets to give you camera shake, and they come in a couple different flavors based off of screen resolutions. And you might find a couple of these packs. I know Premium Beat has one as well. And they work by adding keyframes to a null object. So these are based off of real camera shake. So they look a little bit more authentic than your generic wiggle. But there's one problem with these presets. They're all keyframes, so we have no way to manipulate them other than to use a new preset. And let's say that I use a light shake, but I wanna turn it down even more. We don't really have a way to do that until now. So in the first part of this video, I'm gonna show you a free tool that I made with Frederick from Pencil Park. And in the second part, we're gonna look at how to code that yourself. After installing it, you should be able to find it by going to Shake Buddy in your scripts, and then all you have to do is click on the null layer and run Shake Buddy. And now you'll have expressions and an effect applied to your null layer. And so right away, nothing will change, but you now have these controls. So if I set this to zero, you can see that there's no shake anymore. And so this allows us to easily tone down that original shake. You can see we have a much, much, much more subtle shake now. And if I set this back to 100%, it'll be easier to show that we can also adjust these individual ones. So let's say that we only want it to uh, change position, but we don't want the scale or rotation to change at all. Um, we now are only moving in position and we can crank it up and it will move the position even more. Um, or we can even go ahead and, and move this position intensity up and keep these at 100. And we can even keyframe it makes it a lot more customizable for you to use in your own projects. So that's it. I hope this helps you in your own projects. You can download it for free in the link below. Now, if you stick around, we're gonna look at how to actually code this yourself. The first thing we're gonna do to code this ourselves is we're gonna alt click on the rotation property. We're gonna start with this one because there's only one number in the rotation property. And we're gonna create a variable. We're gonna call this start value. And that's going to be equal to value at time zero. So this is going to be the value of the very beginning. We'll type a semicolon and then we'll click off of this and we're gonna add a slider. And we'll just call this intensity. Okay, so now we're gonna create another variable and we're gonna write intensity equals and we're going to pick whip this slider. And we're gonna do another semicolon and then we're gonna type in difference equals value that would give us the value at the current time minus start value and then another semicolon. So now we've calculated the difference between the value it is currently and the value it was when we started. And the cool thing about how we've written this is that in the case of the position and the scale, these will give you two values, which is an array right? But none of that's going to matter for us. In other words, we're not going to have to code it any differently for the scale and position that have two values. Okay, we're taking two values, subtracting two values, and eventually we'll be multiplying it by the intensity. But we need to end up with two values for scale and position, and we only need to end up with one for rotation. So we can use the same code for all of these. And then finally, we're going to type start value plus difference times intensity. So basically, if we took the start value and added the difference, we should be at whatever current value we would normally be at without any expressions. But if you remember your order of operations, we do multiplication before addition. So that intensity is going to multiply by the difference value. And if the intensity is higher, that difference number is going to be bigger, we're going to have more shake. And if that intensity number is lower, we'll have less shake. So this expression, if I click off, should now be working. And I can copy and paste that into each one of these properties. And now, if I parent this footage layer, you'll see that we have no shake. And that is because our intensity is at zero. And actually, let me go back in here. And before I do this, I already see a mistake that I made, which is that the intensity we need to divide by 100. Because if this intensity is set to 100, we want these to multiply by one. So now I'll copy and paste that into all of these. And now the footage is parented, nothing's happening. If we go to 
we have our normal shake back. And if we go to our null and look at one of our properties like position, you'll see that if we turn expressions off, it is at the exact same uh, position because we're at 100. But if I dial this up to 150, it's going to change a bit. So this is a way that we can increase the shake and also decrease it. And we can even keyframe it. So if we want to kind of start subtle here and go to a higher number, you have that ability now to keyframe. So if you want to take it a step further, you could make another slider and call this um, like position intensity. And we could come in here into position and under intensity, we'll make another one called position intensity and we'll make it equal to this divided by 100. And then you would just likewise multiply this by position intensity. And so um, if we set this back to 100, likewise, everything would work normally. And you could do this for each property, the rotation and the scale. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. And big thank you to Frederick from Pencil Park uh, for helping to turn this into a script. This is not something I could really achieve by doing a preset. And so Frederick turning it into a script was really helpful. I hope it's helpful to all you in your own workflows. See you on the next one.